Hi, Thrawn dear. Hi, oh, this is Ilgrim. Uh, today we're addressing Lloyd or Lindy Beige. Uh, everybody knows him as Lloyd. Uh, he's an archaeologist. Uh, and also uh, a filmmaker. Filmmaker. And uh, he was talking about knife fighting, or I guess dagger fighting, excuse me, saying knife. But he brings up uh, the ice pick grip. Everybody calls this the classic ice pick grip. Right, and, and he did that in a, in a poem. Oh, it was beautiful. So, yeah. It was beautiful. Very uh, aesthetic. Oh, yeah, we enjoyed it very much. We're not saying anything's wrong with the video, and I do agree with you. There's a lot of advantages to the, the club, as some people call it, grip, or the saber grip. And, uh, I mean, yes, it has lots of advantages. I would call this more of a Dirk grip or a Rondell grip, because this came about from the knightly dagger, early period, and it was an advancement when they made the Rondell. It was used for thrusting, but why would you want to limit yourself, as he's saying, where it's harder to aim at all the different areas and... You know, you have to come back this way, and That's you right, do yeah. have all your your angles. But as you see, it looks a little awkward. You have to be really close to do it. And if you don't want the guy grabbing you, you have to hold the way back. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, it's, he's going to try to grab you, and you're going to have to come in at different angles. What if there isn't as many advantages as you think? Because the cutting, depending on what he's wearing, the, the amount of cloth, the layers, right? Uh, whatever he has on his cuirass, it could be a little thorax early period. Later period, if you're talking about the Germanic dueling and stuff, which he's referencing in the manuals, like Tall Hoffers and all the yeah. treaties, uh, they show a lot of the uh, saber style grip working. They show them using it. Yeah. But it is a little bit weaker when you're going to thrust, and if there's no target here, is there an advantage? Because all you've got really got is legs, you've got thrust up, but if you can't really hit a head, because let's say he's wearing a helm, you know, I'm on a full helm, you know, like later century, or well, he's reduces a your plate. accuracy trying to go for yeah. eye slots. Is or... this really strong stabbing up under here, you know? Uh, we're going to look at that real quick. Uh, we want to talk about what if you can't cut through it. Because we've tested cloth before and we know it's very difficult even for swords. to Yeah, even just a, a standard pair of blue jeans is hard Enough to slice through. Enough linen as a gambeson can stop a uh, longbow arrow. Right, that's actually shown by uh, Mike Lodes. That's right, yeah. So, yes, uh, it's easier. You do get more power thrusting this way. Mm, that's and true. that's why the manuals, I believe, talk about all the different techniques on disarming and fighting against this. Because if they were using rondelles, a lot of them weren't even that sharp. It was mostly a very stiff uh, dirk or dagger to get in niches. That's right. And where were most of the niches? That's what we're going to find out real quick. We're going to figure this out real, well, real quick for you. Uh, do a couple of tests because we won't want to stand here and talk and rant. Oh, about no, it. yeah. We want to show you how it but is. One right. thing I was going to say about it is the grip. The grip like this, if you're holding it this way and you cut and thrust, I mean, you can grip it really tight. Uh, a lot of swords, you'll, do, you'll see them actually let it go out. There's no weight to this. So if you try to use the weight and cut this way, it's not going to do you a lot of good. You're not going to accelerate this blade and get cutting. It's all your arm motion. You've got to do it. You've got to step in and cut. So if I'm going to step in and cut, I'm going to step in and thrust. You know, and put my force in it because I'm still going to be committed in either respect. That's right. Yeah. I can't cut through the uh, the clothing. And in the time period, they wore doublets. Uh, they wore uh, army jackets or gambeson. Uh, their sleeves went all the way down to their wrists. All the way to their wrists. They might be wearing leather gloves. I mean, you might have the throat up. Sometimes they had high collars, but you might have a throat up that you can cut and, and, and you know, the, the wrist possibly, or the hands, which the hands aren't really the greatest targets to cut, although you might disable the hand. Inside the hand has the thickest skin in the entire body. Bring this up, which is true in the manuals. If uh, someone were to, to stab down and you catch it and grab the actual blade, I mean, they should grabbing the end of the blade, wrenching it from the grip, you know, doing what have you with it. But you can just grab the blade. I mean, it's, yeah. they're not even that sharp, but this one is extremely sharp here. We actually have cut stuff with it and probing that. But I'm saying, right. if you grab the blade after you have control of the arm, we don't advocate grabbing a blade. You know, like, don't get this idea we're telling you. You grab the blade as it's uh, coming in. There right. are some disadvantages to it, and as he says, when the arm comes in, uh, it looks like you're already in an arm bar. Yeah. I mean, it pretty much does. But it depends on how it's used. Uh, if he was to uh, be fighting me and I grab his offhand and pull him, this is very powerful. He's not going to be grabbing anything. Once I get a hold of him or get a hold of him somewhere and pull him, I've got all this. And with a long dirk, I mean, or dagger, if I can get through here, I can get a lot of power driving this. But and we got like a knife. He speaks of using a shorter knife, but when you look at this, the grip isn't really as good with a knife if it's too short. This is longer than most knives. But when you go to thrust, yeah, you don't have as much reach. And there's a chance you're going to be going down this way. So if you miss, you're just kind of thrusting straight down. So he is correct on that. If you miss, you're kind of... Just, but I mean, all thrusts are kind of that way. If I come this way, but yes, I can kind of angle out more. So I do see his, uh, you know, saying that they've got more angles for thrusting. But as for the cutting, I just don't think that's the greatest advantage. And if I come this way, which is a cut, because in a Filipino fighting, you 
use this kind of cut, if I do this, I'm in the same disadvantage. He can still grab this and wrench it out the same way. Yeah, every, yeah. Yeah, it's the same same exact but, thing. So, but let's go ahead and get started. I wasn't even prepared for that. You know, oh, that's no cool. But let's go ahead and for a prop like that. I'm usually the crash test dummy. That's true. Let's get yeah. started. Right. We're just going to yeah. talk about the power of the thrust real quick, and then we'll get into some cutting cloth ballistics gel. Uh, what I want to do is try a thrust this way. See how much power I can get. This is multiple layers of cardboard. Plus, he's got the breastplate, so don't try this at home. It's not going to go through it. Ah. And that's what I got with that. Uh, I mean, I could feel the power through all that cardboard and the plate. All right, I got, but this is cardboard, so remember this isn't a human body, about two inches. Keep your hands back out of the way. We'll do one more good one. Here we go. Ah. Nice. About two inches. Now let's see what happens if I try to come in with something like this. I mean, even though this won't go through plate, let's see what it'll do. Ah. Dang, I can feel the impact through all of that. Strangely, we got almost three inches. Let's try one more time. I'll even try coming from here. Ah! Farther over than I wanted, scarier for me than a... Here. Not bad. Let's try to get it where I can get it right in the center. I'll just go straight overhead because that is our easiest one. About two and a half, or two and a half. Oh, yeah. But there's more power. That's all we were trying to say. Is there's a lot more power. Turn sideways. Remember, I was talking about pulling the guy this way and stabbing into his body. Oh. And about two and a half inches. But this one's a little bit weaker. If I try to stab this way. I'm only getting about two inches. I'm getting about an, an extra half inch to three inches thrusting the other way. And that's, that's a card power. Yeah, that's just the, that's just multiple layers of cardboard. I'm saying. Just so it's yeah, not right. a fluke, I'll do one more. Oh! Oh. Well, and I got three inches. And I'm not trying to pull this or anything. I'm just not able to do that with this kind of motion. It's just not happening. Try with the dirk. I want to see if we can cut through this. I'll give it a good cut, good go at it, see what it does. Ugh. I cut some cloth, but I didn't even make it through more than one layer. Ugh. Cut some more cloth. We didn't make it through. Oh, of course you're wearing your things. Mm. Mm. We're cutting lots of cloth here, but we're not making it through with the cuts. So our theory is correct that somebody can just be wearing, this is not very thick. This is pretty a light doublet here, right? but we're not able to cut through this. Let's try the knife that was sharper, but we think we you know, felt like it did better at the end there because of however I hit it. <clears throat> That's been dull because I've been using it for stuff, but yeah, we cut through quite a bit of cloth, but <clears throat> quite a bit of cloth, but I'm not getting into much. I'm just cutting a few layers on the outside here. So if somebody was wearing this on their arm or their body, would I be gutting the man? Would it be worth the cut? That's what we're asking. Would it be worth me? If I do this kind of thing, is it worth it? I mean, I, yes, I kept going and cut through all this and into him, but none of this stuff's making it into his body. This is stopping it right here. We can even use a more modern type knife with a larger blade. And... Mm. Mm. The only oh. thing that's going to work is that, and that didn't even go through. <laughs> so maybe... Ah, that did it. Having trouble getting through the stuff? That did it. Now I'm in there. So what we're trying to say is if somebody's wearing just cloth, enough layers. Look at all this cutting we're doing. We've cut through all this. And We've I've cut, cut its ribbons. But what we're trying to say is just cloth. An army jacket, doublet, uh, some real uh, cold weather frilly thing, a jacket. Uh, I mean, heck, we even had trouble cutting through t-shirts before over proper uh, cutting surface. But here he's holding it very tight to him, tighter than you would hold the fabric. The fabric would be loose. That's right, it would so be flowing. A loose t-shirt will kind of flow with it. But if something's real tight, he's holding it really tight because he has to hold this up to his body, it makes it easier for me to cut. But even then, I was cutting layers and layers of stuff and I wasn't getting to anything. Like we brought this up, even the face is exposed, cuts to the head aren't going to kill him instantly. If it hit the face or anything like this, he's not going to die instantly. He might put his eye out, cut his eye. That's why you see people running around with a scar on their eye. Uh, if you cut his throat, then yes, this, this is like this ballistics gelatin. I mean, if I just cut this, you know, boom, this is an unexposed person just sitting here. I can just, 
you know, it was sliced right into it. There's nothing on it. There's no cloth or anything like that. So, yeah. But when you have the cloth on, it makes such a big difference. Especially if that cloth is yeah, flowing, they, not You pretty tight. much want to try to get through it, and that's probably your best bet. Especially these small knives, that's about all you can do with them. Yeah. Okay. Well, we've got a material here uh, to act like a doublet or a batting, like several layers of cloth, like maybe multiple layers of linen. Maybe like a doublet or an arming jacket or, or what have you, which you have in a gusset pretty much. And we've got it on ballistics gelatin. This is some really tough ballistics gelatin. That's so, like, what, 20%? At least. This yeah. is some recon stuff that we didn't want to waste, so we don't reuse stuff. Uh, it, it should work fine for piercing. We can test that afterwards. But <clears throat> this is just to see what it would do with this kind of thrust, uh, with this, this type of motion if you're trying to stab into somebody. Oh. 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 I'm getting very little out of that, and I am trying. I don't want to stab up into you, but I want to stab in the head. I got you. Ah! We got yeah. some through the outside cloth, but nothing went through. Okay. Now we're going to try a different kind. We're going to try our overhand yeah. thrust. Ah! 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 And with this amount of material, I'm not even able to go through this. The only thing we did here is damage the outside layer. It didn't even make it through any of the other layers of cloth. And all together... This isn't much more than a, a, a gamison or army jacket, and we're not able to go into that. Let's try a little less cloth and see what happens. Okay, we had an extreme amount of cloth earlier. I wasn't able to get through either type of thrust, even the one we thought was more powerful. So let's go ahead and test this out. We're going to pull this back where his hands are out of the way. We have less material now. This is just cloth we have. This is just different types of cloth. And the idea is we're just doing it like if you had an ornate uh, doublet or a an army jacket or something like that, and in the inside we have the better stuff here that's more linen-like. We've got less layers in there, so let's try off with the weaker one, or what we believe is the weaker one. I'm going to try to get everything I got. I want to get in here. Oh! Okay, I made it in to it some. Did I actually make it into the ballistic shell? We have to look. We gotta look at this. It's just interesting. Did we get into the ballistic shell? Mm, we went through the cloth but it didn't even make it into the ballistic shell enough to think it damaged it. I mean, we're talking about, you know, like barely tipped it, you maybe bleed and go, ow. Not much. Let's go ahead and try this one. I'll make sure I hit up high where it is at. Oh! Oh! Ah! I see how much force this is taking to go through here. That's what I want to show. You see how I had to, oh! I couldn't just walk up and poke this in it. We got a good one here. This one went in. Yeah. This time it went through the actual layers of fabric we had. But the main point we're trying to make here is that's a good wound. That's deep. But let's try again. We always try our best to test it properly so we're not they cover every angle. Very interesting test we have here, right? It's scary as hell. All right, man, go for it. And you see what happened? It rode up a little bit, but a person could do that. We didn't get anything. Nothing at all. Oh. Oh. I got one in. I got one in. Good shot. Yeah. Uh, that was hard. I don't know if you're watching what's going on with this. But let's try this one now. Try a good one. Oh. Oh. Let's see how I'm able to lean into it. I think I made it all the way to breastplate that Yes, time. you did. With the other thrust. <sighs> oh. That is the longest one we got through. And it That's wasn't, a good four it wasn't five from inches. this, because this is kind of awkward. Unless I'm down low coming up, it's pretty awkward to thrust up this high. If you notice what I'm saying, I'm thrusting up here like this. And if you do this way, of course this is, we already talked about this, if I try to thrust this way. Oh. Oh. It'll work. I had the same spot we did before, pretty much. But it's weaker to get the thrust. And you're saying it's not a sure thing. I don't know for sure that I'm going to make it through. I hit the same spot again. <laughs> but look, I didn't hit the same spot. And even though it looks like I'm using some power, I'm not making it through. And this is less material. The other material, I wasn't even able to pierce it. I couldn't pierce it with either thrust. So what I'm trying to say is bring up a point that I believe this was used because they had more power and because of the areas that they had available and what they were worried about. They were worried about a clean kill and getting out of the fight. They wanted to drive something this long into their opponent 
And with this kind of length, even if it goes in at an angle, as you can see, all these wounds would be fatal. I mean, it's longer than my body. You know, if you drive it all the way home, or even straight down, you can see what kind of wound that would be. Right. I don't oh. recommend, just, just to say it, I wanted to bring that up. If you have a knife like this, I, I don't highly recommend using this, this uh, type of thrust. And the only reason I say that is, is I can show this one simple to them. You have your breastplate, right? Yep. Just put some cloth, or just put some cloth over it. Just anything. Uh, the reason yeah. I don't oh, think right. that a sharp blade is good for this, is I'll say I am going to the body. I have to be in very, very close, like right in here for this to work. You know, unless that's the situation you're in, then possibly. But if I'm from back here and I try it, I made it in this thin cloth, right? But look at my wound. I don't know if y'all can tell, but if you pull this out, and hold it over here at that angle, it's really not as deep as you would think. It's covered more area, but it's not a depth penetration thing because of the shape of the blade. It's because I can't, I don't have as long an edge, so I don't have a, or see how this, the angle I've got, I can cut angle it out. This one's very difficult to do that with out here. I'm gonna wind up every time at this kind of angle. See how it's coming down on me? And it's a short blade anyway, but. Right, the angle's more acute with the smaller knife where it's more obtuse with the. Uh, right, with this one, I've gotten almost to the. With the thing. It's cloth. almost perpendicular. Right, I made it all. Yeah, it's almost perpendicular and you get the penetration. So a lot of it has to do with the length and uh, what I would recommend doing this with. This is more of a dagger, dirk, rondelle, knightly dagger thing. All right, we've got Elgrim wearing plate. We don't have the arms and everything, or we would have cannons. We would have uh, uh, co uh, elbow, elbow cops. cops, we would have uh, van braces, uh, you would have everything. Gauntlets all Right, I mean, it's very possible you get a full plate later century, but I mean, if it's dueling, I mean, we see people wearing partials. I've actually got a type of a gorget, which you might not even have on, which if he didn't, there'd be lots of exposed areas right here. But even if he does, what is the primary spot? If I'm armor two, we're both armor, you have to imagine this, we don't have the plate to be doing this, but we're both fighting with rondelles. Okay, if I'm standing this way, what do I have to get? <clears throat> oh, that hurt, but... Oh! These, these thrusts don't do much. I mean, this is just play. I'm not going to be able to go oh! through here no matter what I do. It hurts him, but I mean, he, that's what he's going to be experiencing is this impact. But am I going to go through it that way? No. But if this is to the death, and I have this like this, and we're fighting, and I'm sitting here trying to get my blade in, and I come in and get an a, a eye slot, that's a kill. I mean, I can get this straight in the eye. And if you look at the longer blade, I can throw a straight shot with it. I can throw it down. We're grappling out. I can get in niches. I can get it up under here if I wanted to. Of course, you could do it this way as well. But the trick is he's going to be trying to stop this the entire time. This is a lot easier to block down low. He's pushing down and he's got his up high. I'm worried about this kind of thing. So when you're looking at this stuff, this is easy to, to, to parry. He's wearing arm guards, so I can't just cut his arms. And the only things I really have are niches, so this is a much more powerful blow. And even this is not going to go through. Oh. Sorry, but it's not going to go through, but it's a lot harder. It's going to hurt worse when I hit, and I can actually try to get into a niche. Possibly up in the arms there's niches, in here there's niches. This would be either a gusset or an arming jacket. I can thrust directly in here, and with this angle I can go right down inside the body easily by using my whole body weight just pushing it in. Where you've got all this power from this blow. Whereas in this situation, if I'm trying to stab it in here and you've got lots of cloth, this may not even go in. I may not get that in. This is a very weak move trying to thrust this away. He probably won't even cringe as much from it than me trying to thrust him. I don't know if you all guys are seeing what I'm saying, but we're just trying to make the point that this is a weaker move. Uh, it's weaker trying to thrust it this way. And, and all I've got is pretty much that. Everything's going to be coming up. He's going to be wearing legs. Legs aren't a good target. If I stab him in the leg even, let's say he was wearing something I could stab through and I stab him in the leg, and I don't hit a femoral artery, he can work me over up here more easily, and I've got to worry about that. So I think they were more worried about their most prime target was their visor and any niches or any areas they might have in here that you could actually get down inside, because this is a lot easier to get down inside here. I don't know if you all are seeing what I'm saying. If I slip that in and get that in, that will go with the length of this blade all the way through his body. If you see what I'm saying, this is a kill. That, that, and especially under the arm. And I can get it up under there, even with that angle. So this is a lot nastier worrying about this stuff and fighting up here. And it possibly occasionally somebody's available to hit them under. 
or up under, possibly come up under with this kind of move. Okay. Trying to come up under the arms like this is very weak. That's what I was trying to say. So this was a power move. This was something that was used in armor with lots of cloth. That's that's what we're thinking. You know, they would have cloth and maybe male gussets or a male white male shirt oh. under it. And some of the mail was very, very fine. So was it possible to go through it? Possibly. If it was really good mail, maybe not. But it's still lots of areas you really can't cover because it's just too too restricted. Well, we yeah. Fight. And, 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 the, and the dramatic dueling, to show people wearing partial plate, like I said, lots of cloth all the way to the, the. I mean, this stuff is probably lots of layers of cloth as well. Oh, yeah. It, it, no one wants to die. If you're fighting a guy lightly armoring cloth, this may be your best advantage, even if he's got it overhand and you're wearing plate. Uh, if you're in cloth and he's in cloth, I honestly think this is a very good uh, technique, like he was saying. Well, you got good reach. Right, but it depends. If you got a rondelle with no edge, you might well, be better off in the other place of just going this way anyhow. And using your grappling and him using his grappling and you trying to go for that that proper that opportunity one, and yeah. get the proper stab. Well, the I mean, one I think was more straight, straight for dealing with only niches, needing as much power as possible to pierce a, a doublet or a, yeah. a arming jacket or a gabison. And that's the whole point to it. Yeah, that's, that's why you see the difference in the styles throughout history. True, and uh, but both styles are still useful even in modern terms. I mean, uh, if you had exposed arms, like most people wear T-shirts down here in the deep south, you know, I mean, I guess you you could use that saber grip with a smaller knife and punish them for trying to grab at you or stab you by cutting their arms up with that. Oh yeah, you could use it to parry with. You could yeah. parry like we we're parrying in the video, but I parry with the underhand dirk or dag dagger, the large one. And if it cuts, yes, if it's open, his arm's open, you will cut all the way. That's right. You'll cut all the way in. Yes. Right. Because there's and nothing there to protect it. He doesn't have a jacket on or a long. But vice versa with the saber grip. Sleeve heavy I mean, shirt or something like that. Right, like but even, even switching back over to the saber grip with the exposed arms or, or exposed You can do the same thing. You can cut his arms while you're, you're yeah. parrying and stuff. You parry and cut at the same but time. It, but it's Catch an it, opportunity. You can cut instead of grabbing or trying to take it away from But him. it's all about opportunity, right. situation, circumstances. But it, I guarantee you, if he was wearing multiple layers of cloth all the way at the wrist, like a lot of these old uh, army jackets were and so on, and how thick and padded they were, how many uh, layers of cloth and how tightly woven they were, you'd have yeah. a hard time cutting into his arm. Oh, if you I, did, I it would be a small cut. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah, if you got lucky. So there yep. you go. I uh, hope you all enjoyed it. I uh, hope Lindy, Lindy enjoys it, or Lloyd. And uh, we just tried to do our best to test it out and explain why we think one was used over the other. And one of the reasons had to do with armor.